In order to support sustainable consumption and production, adopting a green economy is an ultimate game changer. Welcome to this week's edition of People and Earth. My name is Grace Malahleki. Now, research indicates that a green economy can make growth resilient to environmental degradation, climate change, ensure dignity and equity, lead sustainable development, as well as ensuring that there is allocation of resources to everyone. It has also paved the way for green jobs. And to shed more light on this issue today, we have in the studio Mr. Prosper Chitam Chitambara, a development economist, and Mr. Odilo Lindsay, Managing Director at Orleans Waste Management and Recycling Services. Welcome, gentlemen, to People and Earth. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much for having us. Now, Mr. Chitambara, what is a green economy and what activities make up a green economy? And uh, what jobs fall under the green economy? Yeah, so a green economy essentially is characterized by three characteristics or features. The first one, it's, uh, it involves low carbon uh, economic activities. Uh, the second one, it involves um, energy and resource efficiency, enhancing energy and resource efficiency in terms of um, your investments, in terms of your economic activities. And number three, it's also about ensuring that there is uh, social inclusiveness, inclusivity. So when you talk about a green economy, you are not just focusing on the economic aspects or the macroeconomic aspects. You are also including the social aspects and also the environmental aspects. So these are economic activities and uh, economic investments that enhance sustainability, environmental sustainability. Uh, so the buzzword really is it's, re it's, it's about sustainability. Okay. And when we talk about sustainability within the framework of the Agenda 2030 or the Agenda on Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, uh, it's, it's, it's talking about peace and prosperity for the planet uh, and also for, for people. So it's about ensuring that the people and the planet actually they prosper, uh, their prosperity can actually be sustained oh. and also ensuring there is peace, ensuring no one is left behind, mm -hmm. ensuring that no place is actually left behind. All right. So um, in terms of the activities, mm -hmm. so all, I would say all economic activities, all investments that seek to ensure environmental sustainability, whether it's investments, for example, in green energy, whether you are investing in trying to preserve marine resources, uh, whether it's green industrialization. So all those activities, they actually fall under uh, the green economy. And obviously the jobs that are associated uh, with those activities, uh, whether you're installing solar panels, or, yeah. So th they're also part and parcel uh, of the green economy. So uh, it's really a wide, a, a wide concept. And uh, obviously there's now emphasis on, on going green, going environmental uh, sustainability. All right, uh, you mentioned about uh, carbon emissions. Yes, yes. Carbon emissions are, uh, are interlinked with industrialization, with economic growth. So can we run away from economic growth um, like the, at the pace that we were going and what we were using, like the equipment, yeah. the machinery, as of now, I think most of our industry, even here in Zimbabwe, is not yet green. Yes, yes. So does uh, going green mean that some jobs are going to be lost along the way? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think I would, I would say it's a transition. Definitely some jobs will be lost, but uh, it's also important to, make, to, to emphasize that uh, there will be a trade-off because some jobs uh, will also be created. I think there are huge opportunities. Of course, there are also challenges. And uh, really, it's the, the role of um, all of us, not just governments. The private sector has a role to play in, in terms of promoting and ensuring sustainability. The citizens, uh, because when you look at the Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals, in SDG number, number 12 actually talks about sustainable consumption and also sustainable production. So there's actually mutual responsibility, and um, everyone has a role to play in terms of ensuring that we preserve uh, our planet and we also ensure sustained peace and prosperity uh, for everyone. All right. 
now to you, Odili. How does a green economy contribute to the sustainable environment in the wake of climate change? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, as you look, I mean, if you look from the context of you know, uh, green economy, in the context of you know, sustainable environment, in the wake of you know, um, climate change, you get that we are looking at economic activities that help produce you know, carbon emissions, that promote deficit, uh, biodiversity, and also reduce you know, waste my waste which have been produced. So uh, looking, in the, uh, looking in the context you know, uh, of climate change, we get that resources are dwindling, natural resources are dwindling, you see. So we have to protect them in an efficient manner. At the same time, it kicks out our economy in the way that does not harm the environment, you see. So looking at it in that way, we'll be looking at, um, uh, I mean, it promotes climate change. In the sense that, you know, it reduces, you know, um, it reduces, Reduce waste, which in terms of manufacturing, we are looking at you no know, manufacturing which is sustainable. We are looking at you no know, efficiently uh, manage the natural resources which we have, you know, both the actual like I mentioned, and also we are looking at ways that we can create an you know, I mean, employment opportunity within that, you know, within within that sector. You see. For instance, you know, fisheries. We have to, we have to have a sustainable way of fishing, see, in, like for instance, in, in, uh, for example, in Caribbean. Carpenter is saying that it's, it's, it's not long, um, yeah, it, the source is dimly, you see. So you have to farm it in a way that is sustainable, the way, in the same way, ensure that people farm it, see. They have got in, uh, a means of you know, surviving, you see. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so, Mr. Chitambira, in as much as we want to protect Mother Earth. Some people may argue that um, how is like the green economy going to improve people's lives, if in any way? Well, it, 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 it does improve people's lives, well-being and welfare uh, in a number of ways. Um, for example, by addressing the issue of the, the climate change. Uh, All right. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chitambira. We'll have to cut you off there and we'll continue after the break. <music> Welcome back to People and Earth. Today we are talking about a green economy and green jobs. Now, before the break, Mr. Chitambara was uh, talking about how green economies can improve people's livelihoods. You can continue. Yeah, so uh, there are a number of ways. The first one, uh, the creation of new jobs uh, for the people. Uh, one of the labor market challenges that we have uh, across the world, not just in Zimbabwe, is the limited employment opportunities. So going green actually creates a new set of jobs. Number two, uh, it enhances efficiency in terms of our usage of uh, natural resources, our usage of energy, uh, and obviously that promotes productivity. So in economics, we say that uh, productivity is the driver of inclusive growth and sustainable uh, development. So no country can actually prosper without uh, enhancing what we call total factor productivity. And total factor productivity is really at the root uh, of, of, of the green economy. So it also reduces wastages uh, in terms of uh, whether it's food use, uh, it also reduces greenhouse emissions, which even in, in, in improves the climatic uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. So I think there are a whole lot of ways in which going green actually is beneficial uh, to the ordinary citizen. And also by adopting uh, green farming, green agriculture, you also enhance productivity in agriculture. Uh, which is critical, again, in terms of driving sustainable growth and sustainable development uh, in any economy. So right. when you look at e every sector, mm -hmm. there are ways and means in, in, in which you can actually enhance uh, productivity and efficiencies by uh, going green. All and right. that's so directly beneficial. So uh, which sectors yeah. um, can be the main drivers yeah. of this green economy? Yeah. So th there are a number of sectors. Uh, agriculture is very important. Uh, agriculture and fisheries, uh, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for uh, embracing uh, environmental sustainability. Tourism, again, uh, now we're talking about uh, environmentally sustainable tourism. 
uh, manufacturing. Uh, remember what I said earlier on that uh, most countries are embracing green industrialization as a way of uh, initiating sustaining uh, sustainable development uh, in their economies, uh, even construction. Uh, then the energy sector itself has ample opportunities for embracing uh, the green sustainability issues of sustainability uh, in general. So I would say almost every sector, there are opportunities really to embrace um, the green economy. All right. Now, Odili, the um, green economy can serve as a vehicle to achieve the sustainable development goals. Um, to what extent can this be achievable or what are the examples that um, uh, what are the examples of the SDGs that can be attained as a result of the adoption of uh, green economy? Okay, thank you. I believe you know that sustainable development goals can be drivers for economic uh, economic growth, especially green in the context of green green economic. I would say rule number one, you see, it helps us eradicate eradicate you know poverty you see, through um, you know say, uh, say, uh, I mean through provision of you no know, uh, jobs green jobs. You see. For instance, you know we work in the waste management sector. You see. We have got people who are around picking waste, waste you see, then they sell it, you see. It's a means of sustaining this. So that's, look, that's one kind of example of you know, green jobs, you see, which can be, which can be created by, by sustainable development goals, you see. I also said goal number eight, a sustainable development goal number eight, you see. Uh, it promotes inclusive, uh, inc inclusive and sustainable you know, economic growth and productivity, employment and decent work for all. Through, for example, the reduction of labor intensive, you know, work is. Let's take, for example, women, you see, particularly in the context of women, you see, in agriculture, you see. You have what you, you find, you know, like foods, you see, recent foods, you see. It's labor intensive. But if you can introduce, you know, a, a machinery which makes their technology, which makes their lab work la less labor intensive, you see. We also, we also, uh, you know, we also create, can we also create, you know, um, sustainable green jobs in the sense that you know uh, of introducing things like biodigesters, uh, food dryers, uh, introduce food. I mean, introduces loads from food from post harvest losses uh, from from. I mean, it's called from you know from farm to to folk, uh, So we introduce the amount of you know I mean, introduce the amount of losses uh, they by increasing their income. You see. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Chitambara. We cannot um, do anything without any legislative framework. How does the government come in or how should mm. the government also chip in in this um, in advocating for green economies? Yeah, yeah so government uh, must create a conducive a policy and uh, institutional environment to support and to incentivize uh, green economic activities uh, because obviously economic agents uh, respond to, to, to incentives. So the government must put in place the right kind of incentives and reforms really to incentivize uh, the transition from uh, rather transition towards uh, the green economy. Uh, it it do not happen uh, automatically. Uh, the government must provide the, the, the right kind of incentives the right kind of reforms, the right kind of policies, regulations, and institutional framework to support uh, the transition towards a green economy. We've seen it happening in developed economies, uh, subsidizing their, their, their businesses to embrace uh, issues of sustainability. Because sometimes it, 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 it costs money initially, and uh, government can also play a role in terms of lessening that financial burden and that financial cost by, of course, not just corporates, but even by also citizens uh, in order to fully embrace uh, sustainability. All right. Perhaps we can go down to household level. Yes, yes. Yes. How can households also be a part of green economies? I think it's really in, in doing basic things. Uh, when it's farming, uh, ensuring that uh, you are adopting sustainable farming techniques or te uh, techniques, like crop rotation, mulching, and also ensuring that you, minim you actually eliminate uh, lo uh, losses in terms of food, 
uh, and wastages rather, I would call them wastages. Uh, for example, in terms of uh, the food, I think there's a lot of wastages um, in many households and eliminating that, even eliminating uh, pollution, uh, throwing litter. Uh, I think so. Th th those are some of the practical examples that citizens need to embrace to ensure that uh, the green economy becomes fully functional. All right. Thank you so much, viewers. There you had it, that everyone has a role to play in adopting green economies. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You are still watching People and Earth, and today we are discussing green economy and green jobs. Now, Odili, what does uh, waste management and recycling services do since you work there? Uh, okay, thank you for the question. I mean, Ulins was founded in 2016 with the, with the aim of pro providing impeccable waste management services especially the underserved communities within Arari, within Zimbabwe and beyond this. I mean, specifically, we, we, we will do poverty evaluation um, activities like, you know, buying and selling of recyclables from, you know, disadvantaged people, like women, youth, you see, and people with disabilities. You um, I mean, we understand that, you know, we are, not, we are not trying to replace the, you know, the current waste management system, but we are just trying to supplement it in a more sustainable way. In the sense that, you know, we, whenever, we do waste, say whenever we do waste management, we ensure that, you know, the waste is supposed in a, in a safest manner, you know, that does not harm the environment. Okay. In, the, in, the in the same process, in the same process, in the same, in the same process, we are also creating groups, you see. Yeah, especially green jobs for people who are otherwise ex excluded from the economic activities. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Odili. Now, how effective has your program been in creating green jobs? Uh, I mean, we, as, I, as I mentioned, especially when one create, I mean, when I founded this company, it was all about, you know, um, Kickstart, you know, economic activity for people who are from disadvantaged background, you see, because uh, I'm a person living with disabilities. I understand how it is to look for work and not find it. You see. So uh, I realized that, you know, I mean, it was uh, through a tragedy which happened to me. You see. I lost three people uh, due to Korea in a single week, which, uh, the, the Korea pandemic, which happened in Harare. You see. So that's part, you know, a passion to save the environment. You see. And at the same time, I saw some of my friends, they were able to go find work, so I was going to work, you see. So that kicked my passion for me to create green jobs, you see. So I see, initially I started with my friends within the, within the area, you see. We go around picking ways and sell it, you see. Uh, then, you know, it felt that it was just for sustaining, you see. By the same way, when I saw an opportunity that actually I can make money out of this and also create green jobs, you see. So, for example, uh, but you know, during the COVID, we lost our workplaces. You see. Fortunately, I was introduced to Zimbabwe, the same, same group, you see. So they agreed to maintain me. So, in the as about green jobs, I work with people like Chipumataka, you see. She, 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 she do textual waste, you see. Like taking clothes, stitch them together, make, you know, uh, domains and stuff like decorative accessories of home decor, you see. And we also work with people like, you know, Kenneth Gwengura. He do upcycling of furniture. If you have a broken furniture, you can fix it, make a new, either make a new, complete new product or repair it, you see. Then we do it if you would uh, throw it away, you see. So, as I mentioned, we also both going around buying waste from people around the area, you see, around the area. So that's how we create green jobs, you see. Thank you. All right, so Mr. Shambira, you heard it from Odili that Orleans Waste Management and Recycling Company are going to down to the grassroots level, um, encompassing everyone in this fight um, for in a, um, in order to achieve green economies. So, um, can this fight be won? We have just been um, at the COP twenty seven climate change summit and um, developing countries are still bemoaning the fact that the first world 
are the biggest polluters, but they are not doing anything. Um, can, are we able to see green economies globally? I think I would say it's a, it's a big challenge, obviously, but it's a process. I think we need to continue to uh, advocate, uh, even ask scholars to continue to produce uh, papers that actually demonstrate the, the benefits that accrue to everyone uh, by actually going green. But like you say, that uh, the developed economies are the biggest culprits in terms of uh, the emission of greenhouse emissions. And uh, they haven't been very committed to, 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 to contribute to the fight uh, for, for, for sustainability. So I think we need to continue uh, uh, to advocate, continue to fight. Uh, develop, the developing world needs to close ranks and, um, and, 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 and also embrace, fully embrace uh, issues of sustainability across the, uh, across the whole spectrum of their uh, economic activities. Because I, I believe there's a lot that we as developing economies can actually do to ensure the realization of a, of a prosperous, uh, of prosperous people and a prosperous planet. Yeah. So I, I, I would say I think it, it's, uh, it's achievable, but we need to continue the fight and the push. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having joined us on this week's edition of People and Earth. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, viewers. We have come to the end of this week's program of People and Earth, where we were talking about green economy and green jobs. It is possible to have green a green economy which is more sustainable and which can be able to derive green benefits for everyone involved.